Church, I am so humbled to be standing before you here this morning because I am a fellow sojourner with you. And I praise God to be among people who love, who serve, and who walk in truth. Will you please join with me in prayer as we go before the throne of grace and call upon the Lord. Oh, Father, you have told us in your word to praise you according to your excellent greatness. At the end of this morning, Father, if we know a greater reality of who you are than when we came in, a harvest will be brought forth for the rest of our days. Now we ask you, Father, that you just fill this house with your glory, that you would manifest your presence to us, that we would sense you at work in our midst. Teach us to walk in truth. Lord, bring us to a place of true worship this morning because we just want to be totally swept up in you. Loose the spirit in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Church, I want our focus to be in the book of Leviticus this morning, of all places, right? But I believe that Leviticus teaches us volumes about worship. In our passage of scripture this morning, we will see a continuation of the consecration ceremony of Aaron and his sons. They were in the tabernacle for seven days, and on the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and the elders of Israel together. I want you to hear these words from Leviticus chapter 9, verses 5 through 7. They took the things Moses commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the entire assembly came near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and the people. Sacrifice the offering that is for the people and make atonement for them, as the Lord commanded. The next verses describe them bringing their sacrifice to the altar. But now, church, you and I know that that has been accomplished for us on the cross. The atonement has been given, right? The price has been paid. The cross of Christ is our altar. Hear these next words, starting in verse 22, and I'll be reading to the end. Then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people. And hear this. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. Hear these next words. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. Church, this is God's word. I want you to know this morning that I am so excited to be here with you, preaching my first sermon here at this church. But something else I feel that I need you to know is that I could hardly even drink my coffee this morning because I was so nervous. And for those of you that know me, if I can't drink coffee, then seriously, something is wrong. <sighs> and I need you to know that, church, because I believe that if you and I are going to step up and step into what God has called us to do, then we cannot let our fear, we've got to understand that we cannot let our fear hold us back from stepping on that very ground that God has called us to. And I just need you to know that because this is nerve-wracking. 
It really is. Almost every Sunday morning before I preach, I just feel like I'm going to be sick. I told them that this morning. <laughs> it always happens to me. And I, it's because I let fear come into me and overwhelm me, and I think, am I going to do something that's going to quench the spirit? God, did I hear you correctly? Did I hear right what you want me to have to say to your people? And sometimes I'll just be overwhelmed with that, and I just convince myself that I'm going to mess it up. And just about every time when I just lay that out before God, a peace, just the peace that surpasses all understanding overwhelms me. And I feel the Spirit empower me. I've been thinking about what God would have me say to you this morning. And there's one thing that God has given me to echo over and over again. And that's true worship and what that looks like. I come to you with the confidence that this church is what he has been pressing and pressing upon my heart to say to you in this place at this very hour. And recently, God has been bringing me to a place of a fresh encounter of worship. I want you to see with me this morning that there are indeed going to be obstacles that are going to stand before us. And for some of you, there might be obstacles standing before you right now in your life. But church, breakthroughs await us. Breakthroughs await us. We can study. We can think that we are walking in truth. But listen, if we do not have a heart to bow down before God in worship, then there are some of those mountains and obstacles that are never, ever going to move. They're just not going to move. Church, we have a lesson on worship. We were born to worship. We were built to worship. Hear these words again from Leviticus chapter 9, verse 6. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. I wonder... Does anybody in here just want the glory of the Lord to appear to them? For somehow, some right way, God to just, to just come and manifest himself and reveal himself to you through his truth. Is somebody here just desperate for a fresh encounter with God and for God to reveal himself to you? Listen, church, we are not supposed to just set our problems out there at that door and, like, check our baggage and then come in here and have a seat. Brothers and sisters, God wants to speak to you in the very season of life that you are in right now. Whatever is going on, God wants to speak to it. You don't just leave this place then and pick up your checked baggage and nothing has changed. If you have something going on in your life right now, if you have a, a terrible conflict going on at home, how about a terrible conflict in a relationship? Then if you do, you just bring that right in here and you just set it on your lap, spiritually speaking, and you let God speak to you about it. And I pray that he will do that through the theme of worship. You and I want the glory of the Lord to appear to us. I know we do. Let me get my clicker out. And in the word of God, there are all sorts of demonstrations of that worship. There is not just one way to worship or one correct way to worship. It's worshiping in spirit and in truth. You and I want to respond to whatever environment the Holy Spirit has created for us to be in, in whatever gathering that is. In a worship gathering, it is the Holy Spirit who sets the theme of our praise. There are times when through the psalmist we hear them say that we are supposed to clap our hands and shout for joy. 
And I'm that kind of person sometimes. I like to clap my hands and shout for joy. Anybody else? It's good. That's a beautiful form of worship. But this is what the Lord has been showing me recently, is that we can be the clap your hands, shout for joy kind of person as long as we are also the bow down before him, get on our knees kind of person. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you the get on your knees kind of person? Because if you are, then I feel like that person is just so free to shout for joy. That kind of person can close their blinds at home and just dance around before the Lord. And I decided I would let you in on a little secret this morning. When Dan and my kids are not home, and I'm home by myself, you better believe that I am going to crank up my praise and worship music. And I'm just going to dance around my living room and perform a ballet before the Lord. Because I love to worship God in that way. But here is what the Lord has for us today. Are we a bow down before the Lord kind of people? A fall face down kind of people? Because for whatever reason, in this exact season of my ministry, for the past couple of months, God has been bringing me back to this place again and again. For this hour in time, this is what I believe that God is telling me through his word and telling me to say to his church that I now have the privilege to serve. What I want to challenge you to do, and I'm not talking about right here, right now, I'm talking about in your own personal and intimate and private moments with God. Think about this. When was the last time that you went on the floor to worship him, to pray to him, to talk to him, to cry out to him? There are breakthroughs that you and I are only going to have on our knees before God. Church, he is calling his people to humble themselves. That's us. He is calling us to humble ourselves. I wonder who is carrying a load here this morning. Who is sitting in these pews just under a burden of bondage? And you just feel like those chains are just holding you so tight. It all begins with humble ourselves before the Lord. And one of those biblical postures of humbling ourselves is on our knees before God or face down like we read in the Leviticus passage. I don't know about you, but I want to see the glory of the Lord. I want him to reveal himself to me. Over and over again, God's people responded to him on their knees. Sometimes they responded to him by going face down to the ground. Throughout the Old Testament and in a number of places in the New Testament. You see, as we look at scripture and we see a God that fell with fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifices, we want to say, no doubt, of course those people believed. They were right there, they witnessed it, they saw that with their very own eyes. There's a wonderful scripture at the end of the Gospel of John where Christ says, you believe because you saw. Blessed are those who believe what they have not seen with their own eyes. One of my dear friends recently asked me over coffee if I ever felt moved to be on my knees before God. And oh my goodness, to that I responded, yes. Yes, I have. I totally have. God began calling me to this practice a few years ago. And you know what? As I look back, I see that I have somehow received more clarity and more direction on my knees than I have in any other posture I have taken. This past year, as God placed upon my heart the possibility of moving here to Arkansas. And the journey that I felt that he was calling my family and I to. 
There were days, church, when I was so blocked. I was so numb. I was confused. I was scared. I just got on my knees because I didn't know what else to do. And I just cried out to God and just asked him for help, ask him for, for, for just some sort of direction as to what he would have us do. And in those moments, when I'm on my knees like that, I just feel like God speaks to me differently. You and I are desperate to know what God would have for us to do. He is looking for obedience out of us and a fresh approach when we meet him. Approaching him and worshiping him by faith based on exactly who scripture says he is. I want you to see another place in scripture where we're going to see an example of humbling ourselves before the Lord. And I want you to listen as I read from Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 11. Keep in mind here that the king has just issued and enforced a decree that for the next 30 days, no one is allowed to pray to any god or any man other than the king himself. And so if they do, they very well will be thrown into the lion's den. And so here we see that Daniel, knowing that this decree was just put into place, knowing that he could very well be thrown into the lion's den, hear, hear this. Verse 10, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men, and these men almost being like the king's right-hand man, right? So these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Church, that we would begin to respond to God. I mean, out of a physical posture of humility before him, our reverence before the Lord, as Daniel did. Because we have got a very big God. We need to let him start curing us of some of that fear and worry that can so often be a hindrance to us. But you know what? How about those seasons when you're just having a mountaintop experience, right? And life is just sowing, it's just going so great. And you just feel like you're on top of the world. How about those moments? We need to be on our knees praising God and thanking God for those seasons of life too. We need to be rejoicing in that. But what about when conflict surrounds you? What do we do with that? When you have strived and strived to do everything that you can and nothing seems to be working, we don't know what to do, friends, but we set our eyes on God. God, we set our eyes on you. We do not need to fight these battles alone. It's okay, friends. It's okay to change your posture of prayer, even when that feels so uncomfortable and so foreign to you. You know, it's like Pastor Todd was sharing with the children about raising your hands. It's the same getting down upon your knees. There are going to be times in our lives where there's just nothing else we can do but just get down on our knees. You know, when we do that, it puts God in the position to fight the battle for us. God says, you give me this thing, and you see me as God over this enemy. Church, God has been calling me this past year like he has never called me before. And there have been moments where I have just wanted to run for the hills like Jonah did and not look back. I feel like when I finally surrendered to God's will and when my husband surrendered to what God was calling him to, the attacks just started coming. When we finally said, yes, God, here we are. Send us. The attacks started coming at me, at my husband, at our children, at our home. And we 
had to fight many battles with God's strength. Because otherwise, I don't think that we would have made it. I don't think I would be standing here before you right now if I did not just hand that all over to God and let him fight those battles for me. Church, I want to be honest with you. Worship for me for the longest time for many years was singing hymns and shouting praises, clapping my hands and shouting for joy. Because I said before, that is a beautiful form of worship. And that's been the definition of worship to me for the longest time. But recently, God has been showing me that it is more than that. It is more than that, church. Beloved, listen. There is no time for getting on your knees, like when life is just so hard that you can barely stand it. When life just hurts so bad, you just don't think that you're going to make it. Get on your knees before God. When you think obedience is going to kill you, and then you realize it was supposed to. We don't always know what God is going to do with us. But church, our God is huge, and our God is able. So when the tears are just pouring from your eyes, when you are on your knees, maybe even on your face before God, you are washing. It's just like you're washing the very feet of Jesus with your tears. When you could weep and wail, and you feel like your lungs could literally split into two, do it on your knees. It's there that we wash his feet with our tears, and it becomes an offering, a sacrifice of praise. When obedience is hard, and whatever that is to you, God calls each one of us to obey in different ways. Whatever that is for you. On the other side of that difficult obedience, church, is going to be God's biggest work in your life. Church, to serve you is so rewarding. I feel like Paul must have felt in Philippians 4.1. In so many ways, God has allowed the people that I serve to be my joy. So church, I am so excited to be here and be on this journey with you. It is my joy and it is my privilege. Amen.